a super quick history of the Netherlands. G'day guys, how's it going? My name is Ozzy Tash. I'm coming to you all the way from Brisbane, Australia, and I'm wanting to learn all things about the Netherlands. I've learned a little bit about the cities and the towns and how beautiful your country is, your beautiful windmills, canals, and tulips. So now we're going to take a little history lesson. Let's get into it. A super quick history of the Netherlands. Let's roll. This is Europe, and here's the Netherlands. Now let's go, shall we? Netherlands means lower lands, mm -hmm. because the country is barely above, and in some cases, below sea level. Thus, yes. it is geographically low. Except, of course, for Amsterdam, which is famously rather <laughs> high. Anyway, the Netherlands was first permanently populated during the last glacial period by hunters tracking reindeer in the frost. This curious-looking wooden slab is a canoe, the world's oldest known boating vessel, and was found in the Netherlands. Over wow. time, the people began to farm and form formed a portion of the funnel beaker culture that left its mark via chunky stone assemblages known as dolmens. Slipping okay. through the centuries to the Iron Age, we find the southern Netherlands locked into the sprawling realm of the Celts. The Celts were very clever craftsmen, as we see from these artifacts unearthed in Oss, perhaps made by the Wizard of Oss. No, Over a long so. period of time, Germanic peoples began migrating into the land. Now the Germans called their country Deutschland, and this Deutsch was really? later applied by the English to the Germanic Netherlanders, who were called Dutch, and still are. Anyway, mm -hmm. no sooner was the Netherlands Germanified, or Dutchified, than our old friends the Romans stomped in and took mm, over. The most okay. warlike of Dutch tribes were the Batavi, and they started an uprising against the Romans in the first century, which, alas, did not succeed. The oh Romans, gosh. of course, were pretty warlike themselves. In the end, though, the Germanic peoples prevailed, and by the 5th century, Rome could no longer hold them back and crumbled under the pressure. Different Germans ruled in Netherlandish lands, namely the Franks and Frisians. The two fought viciously for many years, until the Franks under Charlemagne were at last victorious. Meanwhile, Christianity was spreading through the land, and in the 800s, the Vikings invaded from the coast and caused the usual havoc, and prosperous trading towns arose along the rivers. But floods remained a problem, so the people around the year 1000 began to to ramp up construction of a series of dikes or levees to better manage the water problem. This freed up more and more land, which, when cut off from salty seawater, became highly mm -hmm. fertile. Nominally part of the German Holy Roman Empire, the Netherlands pretty much did its own thing for most of the Middle Ages, which of course meant nobles squabbling and warring with each other. As trade increased, towns turned into cities with handsome churches and cathedrals. Things Beautiful. were still a bit wild up in Frisia though, whose fierce inhabitants prided themselves on their freedom, and indeed they were a lot more free than most persons in those feudal times. Okay, we're just gonna pause it for a second. Oh my gosh, there's a lot to take in there. Guys, you've got to remember, I'm all the way over here in Australia. We're just over 200 years old. We are not three, four, five hundred years old plus. We didn't have the Romans come here or anything like that. I think the Dutch were the first to actually discover Australia, but they sailed away. They didn't stay here. Um, there is so much going on here. I'm going to try and absorb it all. We might watch a couple of different history videos on the Netherlands, but yeah, this is super cool to learn about your wonderful, beautiful country. Their great rivals were the Hollanders to the south. Now, no doubt you've heard people refer to the Netherlands as Holland, but this is not a technically correct term, as Holland, north and south, makes up only two of the nation's 12 provinces. But since so much famous <sighs> Dutch stuff is yes. located in the Holland regions, the name became synonymous with the whole country. Sort of like how, according to Hollywood, <sighs> Paris is the only place in France. The prosperous 1200s gave way to the wretched 1300s, and its land-threatening wet weather, trade-disrupting wars, and population depleting bubonic plague. Oh, and civil oh. war. There was plenty of that too. Duke Philip the Good of Burgundy brought the Dutch lands under French rule, and then, in 1482, the Holy Roman Empire acquired them again, this time under the famous Habsburg dynasty. In Renaissance times, the Netherlands produced one of the era's finest scholars in Erasmus of Rotterdam, who, concerned at the state of the church, favoured a more personal relationship with God over ritual and ceremony. Nonetheless, he did not want to go as far as Martin Luther and his Protestant Reformation, though the two had respect for each other, they hey. ended up enemies. Erasmus criticizing Protestant theology and the societal upheaval it was causing. The hot-tempered Luther responded by calling Erasmus a viper and the very mouth of Satan. In any case, the Dutch people favored Protestantism, which upset the Catholic king, who made Protestantism a capital offense. Many were executed, mm -hmm. but the anger only increased. So Spain's Duke of Elba and his troops were sent in to crush them, and quite a lot of crushing ensued. Cold-hearted butchery, in fact. Thus oh began the Eighty Years' War. Decades 
decades of resistance and bloodshed, an what? early Dutch champion was William the Silent, who bravely chose to defy Habsburg Spain, which was, at the time, the world's superpower. The Dutch national anthem is in fact all about William, written from his perspective okay. in the thick of those troublesome times. And such times invariably produce heroes. This painting depicts mother of four, Kinao, leading a group of women against the Spanish at the Siege of Harlem. Finally, in 1648, Spain recognized the independence of the Dutch Republic, wow, but kept cool. the Catholic Southern Netherlands. Now, some countries in our world are fortunate enough to experience a golden age, a time of tremendous upsurge in wealth and culture and scientific thought. The 1600s, that was the Netherlands' Gouden Eeuw. The oh, industrious cool. Dutch set to work building, trading, establishing oh. colonies, possessing the world's largest merchant fleet. Wealth mm. poured in. Hauchens discovered Titan, the moon of Saturn, and invented the pendulum clock to accurately measure time. Von wow. Leeuwenhoek designed a microscope by which he became the first person to observe microbes, thus becoming the father of microbiology. And painting flourished. Absolutely. From the great genius Rembrandt to Rauschthal's magnificent landscapes to Vermeer's delicately haunting girl with the pearl earring. Now, while the Dutch had done well in their maritime wars with England, with many a victory due to the brilliance of Admiral Michel de Reiter, things got pretty ugly when the French under Louis XIV invaded and very nearly conquered the country. The French, man, they just like to fight and get into everything, don't they? Um, I've learned a lot about how the French tried to invade Canada and so on. Oh my gosh. Like I said, in Australia, we weren't involved in any of these wars, man. We didn't start really focusing or getting involved in wars until World War I. Um, you guys are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old in comparison to Australia. The wars, they seemed to be based a lot on religion, didn't they, back then? Um, and an 80-year war? This war went on for 80 years. I'm definitely going to have to learn about this. This I find all this fascinating. Um, I have been to Europe. I have been to Paris, so France, I guess, and I've traveled a little bit through Italy. Absolutely beautiful. I've mentioned before, I love old buildings. I love museums. So I was so excited to go and visit the Louvre in Paris and, of course, the Colosseum in Rome. That was absolutely fantastic. But there is so much going on here in the Netherlands in this little quick little history lesson that I'm getting here. Let's keep on going. Conflict ended by treaty, but the economic damage was devastating. The 1700s was a far less sunny century for the Netherlands, as it was steadily outclassed in business, particularly by the British, whose empire mm, was increasingly okay. ruling the waves. In the early 1800s, the Netherlands briefly became part of Napoleon's French Empire, but oh, okay. was loosed from it in 1813. After the Congress of Vienna, the Dutch were reunited with their Catholic cousins in the south, and all were ruled by King William Frederick. But a lot had changed since the 1500s, and the southern Dutch or Flemish people had very little in common with their Protestant northern neighbours. The south was also home to the French Walloons, who had even less in common with the Netherlands. After a revolution boomed forth in 1830, the south proclaimed independence as Belgium. As for the Netherlands, it modernised rapidly and enjoyed a revival in trade and gleaned riches from its colonies in Indonesia. The Netherlands remained neutral in World War One and declared neutrality again at the outbreak of the Second World War. But that nice. didn't stop Hitler from invading. That's the right. Germans conquered yes. the country in under a week bombing Rotterdam into rubbled ugliness mm -hmm. and disposing of most of the Jewish population, the most famous victim being young Anne Frank, whose diary would bring her posthumous fame. The Netherlands was liberated oh, in 1945 my. by Canadian, British mm -hmm. and Polish troops, and the, the Dutch began yeah? to rebuild and decolonize, making great progress under Prime Minister Willem Drees, and was a founding member of both NATO and the EU. And the Netherlands oh, today, cool. with a very high level of human development, one of the world's highest in fact, remains among the richest, happiest and most tolerant nations in the world, a land that has given us superbness in sport, amazingness in art, scientific splendidness, and literary and philosophical fabulousness. Not bad for a country that began as a waterlogged swamp. So <sighs> that's it for the Netherlands, and that's all from me for now. Bye bye. Wow, that was a lot to take in. I have so much to learn about the Netherlands, the people, the culture, the wars, the history, um, how beautiful your cities and your towns are, your laws. I think I've said it before. Everything that is illegal in Australia is legal in the Netherlands. I've got a video to watch down the track on that. But yes, I'm finding this all so fascinating and just loving learning about the Netherlands. <sighs> Gotta take a breath, Aussie Tash. Okay, that was the video for today. If you enjoyed it, please jump on, smash the like button, leave a comment, and of course, remember to subscribe. That really helps me out. Cheers from down under. Take care. Bye.